Check, check. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
Subcommittee on Investigations Oversight will come to order. Good afternoon, everyone. I appreciate everybody's patience. We just had a little um, nasty thing that we had to do called voting on the floor. So I appreciate y'all's patience to um, the beginning of this hearing. But I welcome you all to the hearing entitled NASA Cybersecurity, an examination of the agency's information security. You'll find in front of you packets containing our witness panel's written testimony, their biographies, and truth and testimony disclosures. I want to welcome our witnesses here today. And to begin with, I'll recommend, <coughs> recognize myself for five minutes for an opening statement. The topic of cybersecurity is certainly hot these days. As Washington debates the government's appropriate role in private sector cybersecurity activities, we should remember that the government is already responsible for securing its own networks and information, a task that is executed with mixed successes. While the defense and intelligence communities take great steps to protect data and operations from theft and corruption, oftentimes civil agencies are not as vigilant. <clears throat> In many instances, this is for good reason. Transparency, coordination, and collaboration are core values of an effective government, particularly as it involves scientific agencies. Openness, however, does not come without risk. Many of the technologies developed and utilized by NASA are just as useful for military purposes, purposes as they are for civilian space applications. While our nation's defense and intelligence communities guard their front door, and prevent network intrusions that could steal or corrupt sensitive information, NASA, NASA could essentially become an unlocked backdoor without persistence, persistent vigilance. Information security concerns at NASA are not limited to non-proliferation. There is a serious economic competitiveness, competitiveness aspect as well. The loss or theft of NASA technologies could compromise U.S. innovation and could tail significant future commercial activities that bolster our economy. In order to ensure that NASA does not become weak, become the weak underbelly that allows enemies and competitors to access sensitive technologies, we have to make sure that NASA has the necessary authorities to protect that information. The NASA Office of the Inspector General has monitored the agency's cybersecurity for over a decade, issuing dozens of reports and recommendations. To NASA's credit, they have taken action to address these recommendations in a timely fashion by clarifying the role of the Headquarters Chief Information Officer, re realigning the agency's other CIOs under that office, setting up the Security Operations Center, or SOC, and improving integration and visibility. Despite this progress, the threat to NASA's information security is persistent and ever-changing. Unless NASA is able to continue, continuously innovate and adapt, their data, systems, and operations will continue to be endangered. These are not simply bureaucratic matters that have no real-world impact or theoretical possibilities with little chance of occurring. As the Inspector General points out in his testimony, NASA has experienced 5,408 computer security incidents in 2010 and 2011. That's a bunch. These intrusions resulted in the installation of malicious software or unauthorized <clears throat> access which caused significant disruptions to mission operations. The theft of export control data and technologies and cost the agency more than $7 million. Just last year, <clears throat> the theft of an encrypted NASA laptop resulted in the loss of algorithms used to command and control the International Space Station. Similarly, the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission recently noted in its annual report to Congress that the Terra and Landsat 7 satellites have, quote, have each experienced at least two separate instances of interference apparently consistent with cyber activities against their command and control systems, unquote. 
The fact that NASA is a high-profile ta target should come as no surprise. What is astonishing, however, is the fact that they are such a big target. NASA manages approximately 3,400 individual websites. For context, there are approximately 4,000 websites throughout the rest of the government. Simply surveying this attack profile is a challenge, but defending it presents even more difficulties. Adding to this complexity are differing security profiles for NASA's centers, mission directorates, and institutional capabilities. Despite the challenge, it is still imperative that NASA conduct a thorough agency-wide risk assessment and develop a corresponding mitigation strategy in a timely fashion as recommended by the NASA IG last March. I look forward to our witnesses' testimony and hope that we can all work together to ensure that our nation's space agency can securely support and appropriately protect cutting-edge research, collaborative science, and mission operations. Now I recognize Ranking Member Tonko from New York for his opening statement for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you um, to our uh, two uh, witnesses, to our Chief Information Officer Keratin and to our Inspector General Martin. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, I want to thank you, Mr. Chair, for calling this hearing and again extend a welcome to our two distinguished witnesses this afternoon. Uh, Inspector General Martin has been getting high marks for the uh, work of his office, and Ms. Curitan should be congratulated <coughs> for being willing to take on a tough job that the country needs to see done well. Uh, twice in 2008 on Earth Observation Satellite, uh, an Earth Observation Satellite managed by NASA's uh, Goddard Space Flight Center experienced several minutes of interference that prevented NASA from communicating with the spacecraft. The events were indicative of an international cyber attack and the techniques were used, and I quote, consistent with authoritative Chinese military writings, according to a report by the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission. The report did not attribute the specific instances against the NASA satellites to China, but the implications were clear. NASA spacecraft may be vulnerable to acts of cyber attack. In both instances involving NASA's uh, Terra Earth observation satellite, the report concluded, and I quote, the responsible party achieved all steps required to command the satellite but did not issue commands. Cyber attacks against NASA are nothing new. Over the past decade, both American citizens and foreign nationals have penetrated the agency's cyber defenses, installed malicious software, and stolen uh, scientific security and other data. These threats have come from foreign nationals in China, Great Britain, Italy, Nigeria, Portugal, Romania, Russia, Turkey, and Estonia. Just last month, a Romanian national who had allegedly hacked into a NASA computer server and posted sensitive satellite data he acquired online was arrested by Romanian officials. Last November, the NASA Office of Inspector General, along with the FBI, announced charges against six Estonian nationals and one Russian national. They infected NASA and other computers with uh, malware that alerted the uh, settings of more than four million infected computers, sending internet searches on them to specific websites, generating more than $14 million in fraudulent advertising fees for the cyber criminals. The number of potential threats is expanding rapidly. A recent Cisco system study found that there were an estimated 12.5 billion electronic devices capable of connecting to the internet in 2010. This number will increase to approximately 25 billion in 2015 and an astounding 50 billion by 2020. Given this continued expansion of the computer uh, communications networks, organizations such as NASA will face a digital battlefield of constantly evolving points of attack and new efforts to exploit weaknesses. The challenge in successfully addressing cybersecurity issues is particularly difficult at NASA. NASA owns a little less than a half of the United States government's non-defense websites. There are approximately 3,400 NASA-controlled websites, and nearly 1,600 of these are linked to the outside world. There are an estimated 176,000 individual IP addresses assigned to NASA's IT systems and IT networks. NASA also possesses more than 120,000 computer or related devices located at its uh, centers and facilities that are connected to the agency's IT networks. 
This huge system of nodes and networks presents enormous IT security challenges and potential IT vulnerabilities to the agency. Over the past two years, NASA reported more than 5,400 computer security intrusions that resulted in the installation of malicious software or unauthorized access to NASA's computer systems. These cyber threats pose unique safety and security concerns to NASA. NASA's IT systems control spacecraft, including the Hubble Space Telescope and International Space Station. They collect and process scientific data and contain records on a wide array of technologically sophisticated intellectual property. These are all attractive targets for cyber attack. Yet NASA cannot just take their systems off the Internet to make them secure because they connect its thousands of scientists, engineers, and other employees around the country to each other, and they connect NASA's human and information resources to the rest of the world. Unfortunately, NASA has a poor history of addressing cybersecurity threats. Insufficient efforts have been made in the past to take appropriate actions to confront and correct internal agency deficiencies. For example, the IG has reinvestigated cyber-related issues it had identified in prior reports only to find the original weaknesses still uncorrected. These failures over time have exacerbated the agency's vulnerabilities. They certainly complicate efforts by the new leadership at NASA to address cybersecurity quickly and effectively. NASA's IG has found that the agency does not have an IT security configuration baseline across the agency. In other words, it is unclear what NASA's IT security is supposed to look like because there is no diagram of what it does look like. In addition, the IG has found that the agency's vulnerability management practices have drastically underestimated the cybersecurity threats and vulnerabilities NASA faces, and the agency lacks a complete up-to-date inventory of all of its IT components. Clearly, it is easier to protect your home from a potential intruder if you know how many doors you have and where they are located. NASA does not appear to possess an accurate blueprint of its own house's IT infrastructure. Without that, NASA cannot ensure that every potential gateway into the agency is monitored and effectively protected. My comments are not specifically directed at NASA's Office of the Chief Information Officer or Ms. Curitan, NASA's Chief Information Officer, who is testifying before us today. In fact, I hope my statement makes clear that I believe the problems with cybersecurity at NASA are many years in the making, and Ms. Curitan has had limited time to set things right. I'm also aware that this, the CIO at NASA has limited authority to impose cybersecurity solutions across the entire NASA enterprise of contractors, centers, and mission directorates. There seems to be a gap between the scope of your responsibility and the scope of your authority. NASA's IT vulnerabilities must be identified and closed. Speed is critical in this context. If there are institutional or financial stumbling blocks that stand in the way of completing these critical tasks, then I hope our witnesses will provide constructive suggestions to address them. The committee is prepared to work with NASA to help close these gaps. I believe this is an important subject, and I look forward to hearing from our witnesses. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Tonker. If there are members who wish to submit additional opening statements, their statements will be added to the record at this point. Now, at this time, I'd like to introduce our panel of witnesses, <clears throat> Ms. Linda Curitan, the Chief Information Officer at NASA, and the Honorable Paul K. Martin, the Inspector General of NASA. As a witness, as you know, spoken testimony is limited to five minutes each after which the members of the committee will have five minutes each to ask questions. Your written testimony will be included in the record of the hearing. Now, it is the practice of this subcommittee to receive testimony under oath. Do e either of you have any objecting, uh, objections to taking the oath? Both indicated by saying and no and shaking their heads side to side, reflecting no. Let the record reflect such. <clears throat> Now, if all of you would please stand and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. You may be seated. Let the record reflect that, uh, that the witness participating, participating have taken the oath. 
Now I recognize our first witness, Ms. Curitan. You have five minutes. Chairman Brown and members of the subcommittee, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you to discuss the state of information technology security at NASA. Today, NASA professionally plans, builds, and practices IT security to ensure integrity, availability, and con confidentiality of NASA's critical data and IT assets. The challenge is to get ahead and stay ahead of cyber attackers who tend to be well-resourced, exhibit varying levels of sophistication, and are highly motivated. The pace of technological changes such as cloud computing, social networking, and mobile computing modify the landscape and compound the cybersecurity challenges. NASA's Information Resources Management Strategic Plan outlines strategic goals and objectives to provide cost-effective agency security that safeguards and protects information and information systems. We are determined to improve NASA's capability to predict, prevent, and effectively contain potential IT security incidents. Our motivation is driven by the need to protect mission information targeted by nation states, cyber criminals, and hackers, predict rather than react to cyber threats, and create an adaptive agency security posture that supports increased interoperability, mobility, and innovation. NASA's Security Operations Center recorded and categorized 1,867 cybersecurity incidents in fiscal year 2011. Analysis of those cyber incidents led to additional patching, vulnerability management, communication, and user training and awareness. Building a truly successful security program requires independent evaluation and honest appraisal. The NASA Office of the Inspector General IT Audit Staff continuously and aggressively reviewed NASA's IT security program. Over the past several years, the OIG has conducted audits of NASA's IT systems, applications, and IT practices. They identified vulnerabilities, threats, and risks to NASA's IT infrastructure. In their last semi-annual report to Congress, the OIG noted 37 open IT security audit recommendations calling for NASA to identify internet accessible computers on mission networks, conduct security assessments of mission networks, mitigate risks on mission networks, implement continuous monitoring across the IT infrastructure, improve vulnerability scanning, reduce network vulnerabilities, improve asset management, improve configuration management, update policies and procedures. Sixteen of the OIG recommendations have been closed, and a corrective action plan has been implemented to mitigate the remaining open recommendations. NASA has accomplished the following under the plan, inventoried IT devices and security configurations agency-wide, scanned for vulnerabilities on Internet-connected devices, remediated discovered deficiencies, conducted third-party external assessments of NASA networks to determine website vulnerabilities, introduced new technologies to capture and contain cyber attacks, analyzed approximately 130,000 connected devices to assess vulnerabilities and security patch status, entered a two-year agreement with the Department of Energy for penetration testing of mission networks, conducted strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats assessments to improve strategic alignment of enterprise IT security services standardized IT security incident response procedures, and consolidated contracts to improve street to provide streamlined IT service management and delivery through the IT Infrastructure Integration Program, I3P. Finally, NASA remains committed to continued improvement of the IT security posture as the NASA IT security program is transforming and maturing. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Curitan. I uh, now recognize our next witness, Mr. Martin, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Brown, Ranking Member Tonko, and Congressman, Cong excuse me, Congresswoman Adams, thank you for the opportunity to testify at today's hearing about NASA's efforts to protect 
is information technology resources. As has been pointed out, NASA's IT assets include more than 550 information systems that control spacecraft, collect and process scientific data, and enable NASA personnel to collaborate with contractors, academics, and members of the public around the world. NASA is a regular target of cyber attacks, both because of the large size of its networks and because those networks contain highly sought after information. Moreover, some NASA systems house sensitive information, which, if lost or stolen, could result in significant financial loss, adversely affect national security, or significantly impair our nation's technological advantage. At the same time, NASA's statutory mission to share its scientific information presents heightened IT security challenges because the ag agency's connectivity with outside organizations provides cyber criminals with a larger target compared to many other government agencies. In 2010 and 2011, NASA reported 5,408 computer security incidents that resulted in the installation of malicious software on or unauthorized access to its systems. These incidents range from individuals testing their hacking skills to well-organized criminal enterprises seeking to exploit NASA's systems for profit to intrusions that may have been sponsored by foreign intelligence services. Taken together, these intrusions have affected thousands of NASA computers, caused significant disruptions to mission operations, and resulted in the theft of export-controlled and otherwise sensitive data. The OIG devotes substantial resources to examining NASA's efforts to protect its IT systems. Over the past five years, we've issued 21 auto reports containing 69 IT-related recommendations. To date, all but 18 have been closed. In addition, the OIG has conducted more than 16 investigations of breaches of NASA's networks, several of which have resulted in the arrest of individuals, as has been pointed out, in the U.S., China, Great Britain, Italy, Nigeria, Romania, Turkey, and Estonia. My written statement discusses in detail five issues that we believe constitute NASA's most pressing challenges in the admittedly difficult task of protecting the agency's IT information from loss or theft. Briefly, these challenges are, number one, lack of full awareness of agency-wide IT security posture. NASA's IT assets generally fall into two categories, institutional systems and networks that support administrative functions, such as budgeting and human resources, and mission systems that support the agency's aeronautics, science, and space programs. While the CIO has the ability to implement security programs for NASA's institutional systems, she cannot fully account for or ensure that the agency's mission assets comply with appropriate IT security policies. Number two, shortcomings in implementing continuous monitoring. NASA has not fully transitioned from his, its historic snapshot approach for certifying the security of its IT systems to an approach that relies on a more comprehensive program of ongoing monitoring. Number three, the slow pace of encryption. NASA has been very slow to implement full disk encryption on its notebook computers and other mobile devices, exposing sensitive information to unauthorized disclosure when these devices are lost or stolen. OMB has reported a government-wide encryption rate for these devices of 54%. In contrast, at the beginning of this month, only 1% of NASA's portable devices have been encrypted. Number four, the ability to combat sophisticated cyber attacks. Increasingly, NASA has become a target of a sophisticated form of cyber attack known as an Advanced Persistent Threat, or APT. In fiscal year 2011 alone, NASA reported it was the victim of 47 such attacks, with 13 successfully compromising agency systems. And number five, transition to cloud computing. While cloud computing promises significant cost savings, NASA must carefully weigh potential risks, such as loss or compromise of its data hosted on the cloud. This concludes my remarks. I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Martin. You're dead on. 
exactly five minutes. I appreciate that. And uh, Security, and you were great too. So I appreciate y'all's y'all's um, expediency in getting through this process. Um, I thank y'all for your testimony. Reminding committee members commemor <clears throat> that committee rules limit member question to five minutes per round of questions. I'm going to defer the normal chairs starting the round of questions. I'm going to recognize Ms. Adams because she has a meeting to go to. So, Ms. Adams, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Martin, and you referenced in your testimony a 2010 audit where you discovered only 24% of Mission Network computers were monitored for critical software patches and only 62% were monitored for technical vulnerabilities. Additionally, you mentioned that only 1%, again, of NASA's portable devices and laptops are encrypted. Is this negligence by the CIO's office, or is there another explanation as to why this is not being done? I think you'd have to. I, I don't think it's negligence by the office of the CIO, and you can ask the CIO that question. It's disturbing. Certainly the encryption rate of 1% is very disturbing, because as we've discussed here, NASA's uh, mobile computing devices contain sensitive, very sensitive information. Right, and your office discovered in December 2010 that NASA failed to properly sanitize excess shuttle computers and hard drives, and that at least 10 had been released to the public with sensitive data on them. Did you recover any of these improperly released computers, and what has NASA done to ensure this doesn't happen in the future? Again, our auditors during that actually uh, were able, during the conduct of an audit, again, this was not a criminal investigation, but an audit, the auditors caught what was supposed to have been a sanitized hard drive, and, and we prevented that and gave it back to the agency. Um, they were troubling. There were inconsistent uh, procedures at the four NASA centers that we went to for sanitizing excess shuttle equipment, and, and this, is, this was very troubling. Ms. Curtin, according to the IG, between April 2009 and April 2011, NASA reported 48 agency mobile computing devices with sensitive data and even some including ex export control and third-party intellectual property on them stolen. How many of these devices were encrypted and have any of them been recovered? I'm sorry, I don't have the specific details about those, those devices, but one of the things that we have done is work closely with our desktop service provider to make sure that the devices, such as the laptops and mobile devices, have the appropriate encryption. Um, I mentioned in my opening statement that we recently awarded our IT infrastructure programs I3P, and the key critical contract and program that needed to do that was awarded in December. We have developed a plan for accelerating our encryption of devices, and we have prioritized encryption of laptop and other mobile devices. How many of the 5,400 attacks against NASA in the last two years have originated from those devices or information that was available on those devices? Do you know? I don't have the exact number, but generally most of the attacks are um, sourced through our websites and vulnerabilities through there. With the large number of websites that we do have, it, cr it creates a large attack surface where attackers can easily get in and exploit things if they're not mo appropriately uh, protected. So our big biggest risk is the websites, and the mobile devices do not represent a significant amount of risk in terms of what we've seen. Has the NASA's relationships with contractors and other third parties have, uh, been affected by the lack of security by what we're hearing today? Excuse me, ha has, has it been effective or effective? Affected. Uh, we work closely with our industry partners. We work through organizations like the American Council of Technology, the Information Advisory Council, and another organization called the Cyberspace Intelligence Association, or Cyber Fajitas and Margaritas. And we work through them so we have a safe forum for exchanging information and getting information flowing freely between industry partners about what we can do to jointly protect our common threats. So um, you are in constant contact and conversation with those contractors and third parties because I would think they would be concerned about um, their information 
uh, little intellectual property being stolen. Yes, and also we're concerned about vulnerabilities that we present to their networks and they present to ours. Thank you. I yield back. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Now I recognize Mr. Tonko for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Martin, you've suggested that NASA may not gain full control of its IT security problems until the uh, CIO's office has the authority uh, to ensure IT security policies are enforced across the entire agency. Uh, would you please expand on how the CIO's authority is limited and why that raises hurdles to effective cybersecurity? Certainly. I'm not sure the word authority, I'm not sure we, we use the authority. I think the CIO under certainly the Klinger-Cohen Act and any, NP, uh, any uh, NASA policies has the authority. Um, she does not have the operational control, as I indicated in my opening remarks, over the mission uh, networks at NASA. And frankly, that's where we're seeing the bulk uh, of the attacks coming from, are the, uh, the mission uh, networks that are in the control of the mission directorates or based at the centers. Uh, she doesn't control the funding for those, and, she, and Linda can speak to that. She doesn't control the funding. And as, as we've all seen in Washington, when you don't control the funding, you have a difficult time getting folks full attention. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Kiertan, to uh, illustrate the limits of your authority, um, can you share with us just what proportion of NASA's IT budget uh, you directly control? The fiscal year 13 requested level is at approximately 1.4 billion. Of that, I am allocated a portion of that and it's 152 million. That allocation is given to me by another directorate. So I may, I'm going to get whatever I'm allocated from that directorate and the rest of it is controlled either by CIOs at centers uh, a relatively small portion of it. Now, I will say that the center CIOs do report to me, but their budgets report to their center directors. And then the rest of the $1.4 billion do budget is controlled by missions and programs. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Ms. Kiertan, if you were given more authority over the IT budget and over the mission directorates, how would you use that to uh, enhance cybersecurity policies? I would attempt to consolidate many of our networks. One of the challenges that we do have, especially as it relates to the funding required to uh, implement these safeguards, there are many networks that need to be safeguarded, many doors, many gates to guard. And there needs to be a consolidation of the local area networks that exist at the agency so that safeguarding these networks is a more practical effort. So I would definitely do that. I would prioritize on addressing the vulnerabilities and risks that exist on our networks and then finally address the proliferation of websites to the extent that it makes it difficult for us to secure our networks. There is a strong need for NASA to have networks and internet technologies to collaborate and share information with our partners. But in looking at some of the innovative abilities, the innovative solutions that exist now, there are more modern ways to securely collaborate with partners and still accomplish our mission. And that ought to be, uh, I would think, a high priority within the, uh, the operations that you serve. Correct. Um, absent more authority, um, how can you assure us that you can build a bulletproof cybersecurity program for NASA? I'm committed to work diligently with the goals that I've set before the administrator. I have a very, very capable IT security staff, my deputy CIO for IT security. We work closely as we can with missions. We work to build credibility, to communicate, to improve user awareness. We continue to do those things and continue to attempt to make progress in breaking down some of the barriers while closing some of the loopholes that we do have. Thank you. And Mr. Martin, do you believe cybersecurity can be effectively established at NASA absent consolidation of authority? By consolidation of authority, but there needs to, there needs to be a, a new mindset and a new way to operate. Uh, the, again, having control solely over the IT security apparatus for just the institutional side of the house is woefully inadequate 
to securing NASA's very important information. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chair, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Tonko. I yield myself five minutes now. Last March, the NASA IG issued a report that called for NASA to conduct an agency-wide IT risk assessment. In that report, the CIO committed to developing and implementing a strategy for conducting this risk assessment by August 31st, 2011. First, Mr. Martin, what is the status of this effort, and do you know of a firm date where we can expect that? I think uh, Ms. Curitan would probably know the exact date. I'm going to ask her that, that next. Date, yeah, I, bet. <laughs> I believe the date of August 2011 has slipped, and NASA has asked until, I believe, November of this year to complete that action. Okay, Ms. Curitan. What's the status? Yes, the date has slipped, and we've made a formal request for an extension. What, when are we going to have the, the report and the, I mean, the risk assessment done and a full accounting for what you're doing to implement that? June 2012. Absolutely. Positively, June 2012. We keep slipping past these dates, and we, this committee would like to know when, when we can expect that. I believe that I'll make it. I'm committed to make that happen. There are, I can't say that there are things that won't happen uh, that cause us to change our priorities, but it is an absolute priority for me, and I'm committed to make sure that it happens. Well, certainly we need to have a way to implement this risk assessment. September 2012 and December of 2011, the NASA IG issued reports recommending that NASA transition to a continuous monitoring approach for its IT systems. Mr. Martin, what is the status of this effort? It is ongoing. I think NASA has made some significant strides. This is a whole new approach to monitoring government, the security of government systems. And you may be familiar with the FISMA, the Federal Information Security Management Act of a number of years back. Unfortunately, we've seen in the IG community it devolve into really somewhat of a less effective paper-driven exercise. And so there's been a move that's been promoted by OMB and the Department of Homeland Security to move more toward what's called a continuous monitoring. They set up a dynamic uh, security oversight process because the IT systems that you're reviewing are dynamic and ever-changing. So we assess NASA's move from the old static, what we call snapshot system, once a year at this moment in time. Do you have the policies? Do you have the paperwork? As opposed to, hey, do those policies and paper mean anything? Do they work? And moving to continuous monitoring. NASA has made strides, but as you point out in our audit report, mm -hmm. we found a couple significant areas where NASA needs to make uh, significant efforts in order to have an effective continuous monitoring program. And you've made those recommendations to NASA? We absolutely have. Okay, Ms. Curitan, you want to answer the question? Um, we've committed to completing the activities enable that in November 2012. There are several steps that we need to make. One of them will be to have a more robust asset management program to have a situational awareness of the configuration of the networks and the endpoint devices. And we believe that that should be essentially completed in first quarter fiscal year 13. And this is going to be a continuing monitoring process? Yes. Okay. In 2011, NASA developed a governance model to streamline IT decision making. What role do the mission director, senior officials, the subject matter experts that are responsible for mission success play in the IT security decision making process, Ms. Curitan? We have governance boards and working groups that have representation from each mission directorate. And um, we have enterprise architecture boards that have representations from the mission directorates. Our IT management board has representation from a mission, a mission director in terms of a mission director at CIO. At the senior levels, there's the Mission Support Council that consists of myself, the assistant associate administrator for mission support, the associate administrator, the deputy associate administrator, and the CFO, and then report to the executive council, which consists of the administrator, the deputy administrator, and some of the others that I mentioned earlier. The representation from the directorates and the centers would come from the administrator, the, the deputy administrator, and also through the associate administrator. Okay, my time has expired. I'll now yield five minutes to Mr. Tonko. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so a question I'll pose to uh, both of our witnesses. Um, what do you see as the biggest um, IT security threat facing NASA today? Would it be foreign governments, 16-year-old uh, children in the United States, cyber criminals, groups like Anonymous? Is there any way for either of you to quantify uh, the IT threats that NASA faces and what the actual impact of these threats have been to uh, NASA? After you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. When in saying big, um, big would be quantified as like the largest number of attacks, or perhaps it could be a small number of attacks, but a bigger impact. So it's hard to really say what is big, but certainly the impact is the advanced persistent threat in terms of what it means to our nation's security and our nation's future. Um, but then big in terms of numbers tends to be more along the criminal side because there's, a, there's opportunities to get financial information, personal identification, ident identification from employees that could financially benefit hackers. And probably by numbers, some of them appear like that, but by impact, it's probably more along the lines of the advanced persistent threat that's probably attributable to nation states or organized crime. Mm -hmm. I don't, Martin? I, I, thank you. I don't disagree with that assessment at all, but we've seen the whole gamut. We've seen the Swedish teenager bringing down NASA's supercomputer at Ames, causing upwards of $6 million in damage for remediation and offline. We've seen the, the criminal, sophisticated criminal enterprises that go in. Uh, as was mentioned, we had six arrests in Estonia, working with the Estonian National Police. That was primarily a financially derived initiative. But once you're into NASA systems, even if what your goal is to redirect internet traffic, um, you know, for what they called internet fraud, click fraud, more of an advertising scam, you have access into NASA systems. You can sell that access to other folks who are after NASA sensitive information. So it really runs the gamut. Thank you. And all NASA IT components are supposed to be identified in a database established by the CIO's office called the IT Security Enterprise Data Warehouse. Um, the IG's audit found, I believe, that out of 289 NASA IT components, they reviewed only 175 uh, that were included in that database. The IG found that NASA's failure to maintain a complete up-to-date inventory of IT components significantly diminishes its ability to develop and maintain a continuous monitoring program. Where do we take this from there? So the first step would be to increase the number of assets that we, are, we do monitor. And uh, that would be by um, increasing and improving our asset management program. And once we do that, we're able to determine the configuration of those assets and maintain the right inventory of baseline configuration levels. And then finally, make sure that we're able to monitor each component of the network to look for intrusions and, and identify them as soon as possible. Thank you. And many of the issues we're talking about here today have been endemic at NASA for at least the past decade. Can both of you please address that issue and tell us why you believe these IT security issues at NASA continue to occur, why it appears NASA management has had such a difficult time reining in these issues and managing its IT security structure in a better format? Me first? to you. Okay. Um, it, the most difficult part of addressing this is culture. Um, we spend a lot of time focused in the technology part of it, which is really difficult too. But culture is probably the number one impediment. IT security is considered a CIO's problem, but IT security is basically a mission problem. The information that the actors are looking for is mission information. They're looking for the information to get some advantage in terms of whatever the motives they have um, would dictate. And being more focused on the institutional side doesn't really protect where the biggest risk is. But being able to persuade the mission, the culture of the mission that they should include a culture of looking at IT security 
issues is a big challenge, admittedly. And so as with working through any culture, it takes a long time to do, a long time to build the credibility, to, um, to provide the impetus to change, to get critical mass that says, yes, we're going to do it and go forward. And so that process takes a long time, and it has taken a long time. Um, anything? To Just, I think I would part? agree with that. I, I think if the goal is to have IT security at NASA more centralized in the CIO's office, she would need a much larger stick than she currently has now. Thank you. And I've exceeded my time. So, Mr. Chair, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Tonka. <clears throat> now, I yield myself five minutes. The Wall Street Journal article on November 17, 2011, titled China U.S. Use Same Tracking Base, states that the Chinese entity, China Satellite Launch and Tracking Control General, part of PLA's General Armament Department, leases a ground station in Dongra, West Australia, that is run by a Swedish state owned company called Swedish Space Corp and a U.S. subsidiary that supports U.S. Air Force space surveillance satellites and NASA. According to a spokesman for Australia's Department of Innovation, Industry, Science and Research, quote, Australia did not consult the U.S. on the establishment of the SSC facilities or its customers. Ms. Kierden, what insight does NASA have into the information security measures employed at foreign satellite ground stations? And do these foreign sites have a multinational presence, present unique, do, do they present a unique challenge to NASA IT security? <clears throat> well, obviously we have to work within the constraints of what state and local uh, authorities are there. But we do protect the nodes of our network that exist at foreign state, foreign uh, locations. I can't speak specifically to the article that you quote, but I will say that we do take se the proper security precautions at foreign uh, locations. Well, this seems just to be kind of a <clears throat> roundabout way of losing our security. Um, and I, I hope you all look at the, the presence that the, these do present, because I think it does uh, present a unique challenge to y'all's security. The U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission issued an annual report last November that indicated that the Terra and Landsat 7 satellites experienced interference apparently consistent with cyber activities against their command and control systems. Ms. Gerardin, who is currently responsible for ensuring data integrity and security for NASA satellite operations is at the CIO and mission directorates? It's the mission directorates. How do we make sure that they say secure? Do they stay there or do we come back to your office or how to tell us what you recommend? I believe that the mission directorates need to own the responsibility of security for their assets. Um, one of the challenges is that I own the responsibility of securing other people's assets, and I own the responsibility of making them a priority according to somebody else's priority. So um, once the responsibility of securing mission app networks and assets, in this case, properly resides with the proper management authority, I think we'd see better responses. We need to see some better responses across the board as far as I'm concerned. Now, what insight does the CIO have into contractor compliance with NASA IT security standards, and who is responsible for providing contract information security oversight, Ms. Kiernan? The responsibility would go to the owner of the contract. So if it's in the mission directorate, that's where it, that's where it would be. Okay. Mr. Martin, do you have any suggestions or thoughts? I think our, what we do is we audit and we investigate. And because I think this is the fundamental issue facing the IT security at NASA, that is, are we going to have a CIO's office and what structure would best implement a strong security uh, function at NASA? 
because the limit is, we've discussed the limited authority that she has over the institutional side of the house as opposed to the mission side of the house. So we have opened an audit that's going to look at the governance structure that NASA currently employs in its CIO office vis-a-vis uh, -vis its mission directors to try to find where that balance, where the best balance of authority and responsibility would be. When will that audit be available for us? We, we've just begun it. I would think that's probably, we're probably looking nine months down the road. Well, please get it to us as quickly as you get it. We, this committee is very interested in hearing that. NASA has conflicting priorities when it comes to information management. On one hand, it has to protect sensitive information associated with dual use and proprietary data from release. But on the other hand, it has to facilitate scientific collaboration, which requires open access and transparency. Ms. Kierden, how does the CIO manage these competing cultural priorities? One of the key enablers of this is with our I3P infrastructure program. One of the contracts awarded was to SAIC to manage networks. We have many networks at NASA. We have wide area networks and we have many, many local area networks. So the network service provider will be moving through the agency and assuming operational responsibility over existing networks. That will take some work in terms of working with mission directorates and looking at responsibilities where they're separated and where they're joint. And then once we do that, then we're able to have an awareness of what's out there. Well, thank you, Ms. Garrett. And, um, and Mr. Martin, I thank you all for y'all's testimonies today. This is a huge issue. I see a tremendous vulnerability for um, a very sensitive underbelly of our own uh, economic security as well as as potential um, defense security through NASA. Uh, as I've stated before to both of y'all, uh, uh, cybersecurity is extremely important to me as an individual, and I think it's important to Mr. Tonkin and I, all of us here on this committee. And I hope that we can find some way to make sure that the that um, we have better cybersecurity, IT security within the department, and I'm looking forward to working with both of you as we go forward and helping to develop a better security infrastructure within NASA. Um, Y'all been great. The members of this subcommittee may have additional questions for you all to answer, and we'll ask for you to respond to those in writing. In fact, I have a number myself that I'll submit to you all and I'm sure all of us will probably do so. The record will remain open for two weeks for additional comments from members. The witness is excused. I thank you all very much, and the hearing is now adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Take sir. Care. Good questions.